today and go over this uh, reciprocating compressor. Um, we'll cut it open. We've got my tools here, got my grinder, glasses. Uh, I just want to go over a few things before we get to that. I'm just going to grab the camera here. So a few things to notice on the compressor just to start with. So I'll identify a few things. Uh, first of all, the nameplate. So, uh, focus. You can see the nameplate there. Let's focus issue a little bit, but um, you can see it. Uh, so AGA 2425AXA is the model number. A lot of information you can get from that number. Uh, we're not going to get into that today. Uh, but it'll tell me the BTU rating, body type, uh, a lot of things. Voltage, 115 volt, single phase. Uh, this wasn't our 12 compressor, so you know it's uh, older. Um, a few other uh, lock rotor amperage. Um, so, uh, wiring terminals, so when you're connecting the wiring, you connect them to these terminals. We'll see what this looks like on the inside once we take it apart, but very important that they are wired correctly. Uh, a little bit of a note there saying, uh, telling you that if it's not wired correctly, it can fail very quickly. The manufacturers, compressor manufacturers will tell you um, that warranty compressors, when they get them back, majority of them, um, there's nothing wrong with them. Uh, there's other issues. Um, or they failed for uh, other obvious reasons. Um, so important that these are installed correctly. So we have the suction connection here, discharge connection there. So hot gas out, suction gas in. This is a rotolock fitting. Um, I'm actually going to do a video on uh, access valves later on. Uh, just showing the inside of the valve and how it works, how the access port works. This happens to be a rotolock, just means that it connects this certain way. Um, so very important with these that the little Teflon seal in there is in place and in good condition or they will leak. Um, these do over time tend to rust sometimes. Um, so, let me put my camera back in the stand here, and I'll get down to some work. Sorry for the bouncing. Uh, get that going. I'll grab our stuff here. That for sure. Let's get this grinder going. My trusty Milwaukee.
All right, so I'm gonna try moving you in a little bit closer here and uh, see how we do with the machine. I wouldn't mind getting, I'll try to zoom where the zoom does there. There you go. So I'll take the electrical cap off. It's probably a little bit warm. So it's got, um, let me turn this around. Okay. See the electrical connections in there. I can just pull this off. Careful because those edges will be very sharp. off. Electrical. <clears throat> so the last thing they do before they seal this up, discharge line, this is coming off the compressor, um, the pumping part of it, the cylinders, um, and this line connects to this line on the outside here, this discharge line on the outside. So we're uh, actually just going to cut that have oil in them. I think we've gone over that in the lubrication. Um, and what we will do is we will take this compressor apart. I'm going to turn the camera off for a minute so I can go grab some tools. some tools here. So <coughs> let me just show you here. So <coughs> here's the motor winding the internal in the compressor. See the copper. You notice when you look at motors, because this is a split phase motor, start winding, start winding, run, winding. There's two separate windings and you'll notice difference in the thickness in the copper. Very very thin small gauge wire, heavier gauge wire, heavier gauge run winding, smaller gauge wire, start winding. Um, and if you've taken motors, hopefully you've taken some motor theory and you understand why that is. I flip this over. This is the head of the compressor, which will undo. So I figured out that these bolts are seven millimeter. I have my socket and I'm going to oh maybe it's not seven millimeter because that's slipping. Let me just try the six. So I may end up using pliers on that because 
so it's sort of a it's a different kind of a star configuration. So probably something that the manufacturer decided they wanted to uh, use on their own, make it difficult for other people to take apart. Let me try it with these first. If I can get a grip on it, I don't really care about the bolts at this point because this will be scrapped after we're done. So I'm going to grab some other pliers. case scenario we will drill them out. I've done that before. You'll, you'll see that on the automotive compressor when we get to that one. Okay, so you missed all the fun. I ended up drilling them out tried a couple of different things. I tried a Dremel, cut a slot in it, screwdriver, didn't work. Um, none of the sockets fit. So it's, I ended up drilling them out. They were hardened, went through a few drills, a few, uh, few words that maybe good thing they weren't filmed. Um, so anyways, so we're ready to go here. So head of the compressor here. So normally you would undo these bolts and this head will come off. I'm trying to get it off piece by piece. I'm not sure the valve plate will separate. separate the valve plate. There. Little valve plates usually on here with the valves, discharge valve, suction valve, gaskets, that's on there. So as it sucks gas in, this reed valve pops down like that, allows gas to go in. As the cylinder goes up, this discharge valve has a flapper in it. That flapper lifts up. So then on the suction stroke, this valve closes. On the discharge stroke, this valve closes. That is the valve plate. Mounts to the head. Assembly goes on. And you can see inside here, single piston. Piston going up and down. Motors driving the piston up and down. Causing the pumping. Interesting thing here. When you take these apart, for some reason, this compressor would have been replaced. So it's always a good idea to figure out well why, what failed here. The interesting part is I don't see anything that may have failed. Um, but we'll we'll dig a little deeper. I'm going to take the bottom end off, and we can. Uh, look at the just trying to figure out on this one which would be the better way to do it if I take the end off or if I 
Let's try the end first. Let's do that. This should be able to do that even with uh, small adjustable. But I don't think they are standard sizes. So what I'm doing here, hermetic compressor, you're not going to do this in the field. This is a sealed compressor. And if it fails, you're going to take the compressor out, put everyone in, and away you go. I'm wondering if there's some spring loading on this, because this bolt is quite down on that shaft, pushing back on this. I'm going to turn it this way. Take those bolts out. Will there be any a bearing on this end um, for the shaft that goes through? See how easily this might separate. Oh, not too bad. So end bell, bearing, other end of the shaft. And I don't know. You should be able to see the uh oh, I had a robin in my garage. So you can see the connecting rod, hopefully turning around there, pushing the piston up and down. Not too often you have a single cylinder, the smaller compressors, yes. Um, oh, to get to the bigger ones, there's two, four, six cylinder. Uh, this just happens to have one. Um, I actually had a... Uh, connecting rod and piston on my desk as a paperweight, kind of a cool little uh, accessory, I guess. So so that is sort of the disassembled compressor, reciprocating compressor. You can see all the working parts, so you know, if we ever down the road if I get to a semi-hermetic you'll see a lot of this a lot of similar parts um, so the motor here stator uh, so stator rotor rotating part rotor stationary part stator um, connects to the pins that were in the cap in the top um, so that is basically your reciprocating compressor so on semi-hermetic compressors you can actually I'm going to break the gasket on here but just to show you that the suction valve you can actually change these on semi-hermetic compressors the uh, you can see the the wear on those from time work um, the discharge it's a little bit more difficult it's a little little stronger so I'm not going to Take that, but you can see the valve plate assembly there, discharge valve, suction valve, so lots of cool stuff in there. So hopefully you've uh, learned something with that. So I noticed I missed a few things, and I was uh, putting these videos together where you couldn't see some of the stuff so I apologize for that but I'll go over it a little bit better here so this with the valve plate this is the valve plate uh, suction valve on the bottom here I'll pull this off again so you can uh, see it a little bit better and actually see it and not be off the screen so that is the suction valve there And on the other side here, the discharge. Um, so this is just a, a, a stop. The valve is actually underneath there, a little flapper.
neighbors driving by this big dog in the truck so that's the valve plate and I believe pretty hard to see um, man let me I don't know if I can lighten that up a little bit better I wonder if I use a flashlight I guess because the sun outside is, is shining on that. It's going to get a little flashlight. And that should actually show it a little bit better. So if you can... I don't know, the focus on this thing is pretty bad. But uh, there you can see the, the connecting rod there. side uh, maybe you can't see it there we go I think that's now you can see it so, and that's driving that just been up and down there so there just to see that a little bit better I was hoping to clear that up a little bit. So, reciprocating compressor, 